Four times a month on Buddhist Sabbath days, the local community congregate at the monastery. Some travel from afar to hear Ajahn Chah's discourse. The day begins with chanting. To help people contemplate the true nature of the body, we have human skeletons in the assembly hall. Because when one doesn't understand death, life is very confusing. If our body really belonged to us, then it would obey our commands. But if we say, don't get old, or I forbid you to get sick, does it obey us? No. It takes no notice. We only rent this house. We don't own it. If we think the house belongs to us, when we have to leave it to die, we suffer. In reality, there is no such thing as a self. Buddha made a distinction between ultimate truth and conventional truth. The idea of a self is merely a convention. Foreigner, Thai, you, the interviewer, these are all conventions. In ultimate reality, there isn't anybody. There is only earth, fire, water, air, elements which have combined temporarily. We call the body a person, mine, but ultimately there is no me, there is only anatta, not self. Some of the lay community will sit up all night meditating on these themes with the monks. For a brief period, they are inspired and uplifted and become one with the spiritual struggle of the monks. To understand anatta, not self, you have to meditate. If you only intellectualize about it, your head will explode. Once you understand anatta, then the burden of life is gone. Your normal daily life with your family, your work, all will be much easier. You'll be at peace with the world. When we see beyond self, we no longer cling to happiness. And when we stop clinging, we can begin to be happy. Shouldn't be concerned with nirvana or attaining nirvana. If you are, then that in itself will prevent you from gaining nirvana. So what should a monk's main concern be? Chanan, uh, the aim is to let go. Yeah. So you have to let go, but without striving to let go. Wow. That's right. You Mort should let go without without desire. Mort. If there's still desire in the pursuit to do that, then that's not nirvana. The ultimate truth is like the flavor of an apple, which you can't see with the eye or hear with the ear. The only way to experience it 
is to put the teaching into practice. Once you've tasted it, you'll no longer be in any doubt about its flavor, and you won't have to ask anyone else. The problem will be solved.